Hey everyone, this is Aaron Patzer of Vital, coming to you from the temperate jungle of New Zealand somewhere, just out on a walk. Uh, I'm going to continue our four or five part series on algorithms in healthcare, and this time we're going to talk about uh, what's on everyone's mind, uh, generative AI, and in particular LLMs or large language um, models. So the thing that you want to know about how a large language model uh, works is even though ChatGPT or GPT-4, the world's most sophisticated AI algorithm, has a bunch of emergent properties we did not expect from it, is remarkable at writing in the style of or um, even categorizing things, it, it's almost like a great general purpose algorithm. We've been using it as such in a bunch of different ways. Um, it, it is not artificial general intelligence. It's very far from it. It's not, you know, real human level intelligence. The way that it works is um, it predicts the next word given all of the prompt that you've given it, as well as any responses that it has already given and any words that is already generated. So what that means is it has incredible context. So it's, it's many pages um, of historical context that affect your answer, which is why when you ask it a complex question, it can more or less go through, look at everything and figure out what's the most probable next word to spit out. And once I spit that word out, not only um, is what's the most probable next word based on the prompt, but also based on what I've already said. And so that produces very clear English looking sentences. Um, and one of the keys to the way that it does this is it's actually unpredictable. It adds a bit of um, randomness in there. So instead of always choosing the next most probable word, it says these are the 20, you know, uh, most probable words um, after the word artificial. It might be artificial intelligence. It might be artificial meat. It might be artificial limb. This is tricky because um, LLMs are incredibly valuable. We use them for our doctor to patient translator. We released it to the public last August, but we've been using it since last April, so almost a year now. And what it does is it takes, you know, all these complex um, doctor's reports or radiology is particularly bad. Um, and it says you have a fracture of the posterior malleolus and the patient's like, what does that mean? Or you have, your mom has had a cerebral infarction and it translates that into your mom has had a stroke or you have a fracture of, of the foot, you know, bone in your foot. Um, and the way that it does that is um, kind of similar to what we talked about with NLP and word vectorization. Um, the way that everything is encoded inside a large language model, it's finding all of the synonyms. So typically the way that you would do that with word vectorization is you, you look at things that are used in the same context. You know, intuitively the word large and big and gigantic and humongous kind of mean the same thing, but they're obviously different words, but they're used in similar enough contexts that they have a similar internal representation inside this huge machine with literally billions or trillions of, of parameters. And the problem with programming is if you say, I'm looking for the word wrist, and it's like, oh, sorry, I didn't catch the one with wrists, plural. You're like, damn, you're so precise. Um, you're, you're, you're too precise as a computer. And what uh, a large language model lets you do is you, you want to say, I'm parsing a, an unstructured uh, medical note. Uh, we can do that across health systems who use radically different formats with just a single prompt. We've been very successful with that. Um, and you can summarize very successfully. Here's what you can't do. Um, if you look at the way that like a GPT or something was trained, it was trained on what's called the common crawl, which is more or less the internet. Wikipedia makes the biggest part of it. The New York Times makes a huge part of it. Um, so LLMs are, are prone to hallucinate and they were probably only trained, they were trained on like um, PubMed, so they, they do understand medical terminology, but what they don't understand is they don't understand CPT codes 
or SNOMED or LOINC codes or internal insurance codes um, for billing because they're just not in scientific publications. They're just not in books. They're just not in the training material. So it may have seen it once or twice. So instead of like a good, clean, high probability next word, as we talked about in the beginning, it's just like, well, I know I need a number here, so I'm just going to make one up. You know, I'm just going to choose the number that I saw only once or twice, which means that instead of seeing it hundreds or thousands or millions of times in this context, which gives you a lot of confidence that is the right code, the right number, the right whatever, um, it's not smart. It just, it's just saying this is the, the highest probability answer I have to, to produce reasonable output. And it just doesn't have enough data. But there's not always enough training data um, in healthcare. The good news is you can correct for hallucinations. The way that we've pushed it even further is to actually ask the LLM to, to summarize and then to, to take that input and feed it back in and say, here's the original, here's the summary, what's missing inside the summary or what is not indicated in the original that is in the summary or vice versa. And you can actually have the LLM check its own output. There are startups who are tackling the hallucination problem um, head on. All it means is you're using LLMs over and over and over again iteratively to correct their output. So that's the power and the disadvantage of LLMs um, and how we found to use them best. Thanks.